All right, good morning. You're, you're a rowdy bunch this morning. It must be, I don't know what, Father's Day, right? No, it's the first day of summer. First day of summer. I hope that was tomorrow. That's today. Is it today? Longest day of the year. Enjoy the hot sunshine today. Hey, welcome this morning to North Baptist Church. Uh, this morning we're going to, uh, we have everything's crammed into a short amount of time here. So uh, we're so excited you joined us. If you're on Facebook this morning, we encourage you to uh, share this on your page this morning so others can join with us and uh, just enjoy the festivities and for the worship for the Lord this morning. Uh, we encourage you to do that. And with that, this morning as we begin, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, again this morning, we, we come to you, Lord. You know, we, we know that this is, is Father's Day, and ultimately, Lord, we are so thankful for uh, who you are. Uh, the way you love us, the way you provide for us, the way you uh, truly do the things that uh, so many times are just unseen in our lives. Uh, Lord, this morning, we just ask that you would uh, uh, truly minister to each one of us, that you would speak to us. Lord, as we come this morning, I know we come from uh, varied backgrounds and varied places. And, and Lord, this morning, I just ask that we would be able to kind of put aside all those things that uh, bog us down, that uh, uh, cloud our vision, Lord, just uh, things that uh, just sometimes are just overwhelming to us in our lives. And this morning, I just ask that you would uh, allow those things not to uh, get to us, but this morning, Lord, we'd be able to to see you and feel your presence, uh, Lord, you speak to us, and uh, whether it's through song, uh, through prayer, through the message, through different things that we go through this morning, Lord, we just ask for your guidance and direction. And so this morning we give you praise, Lord, we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to stand this morning, we're going to sing, Send the Light.
needed this morning. Hey, I've got some announcements this morning, so hopefully you have some things to, uh, something to write on and something to write with because we need your, your help and some things this week. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, Bible study will again be Facebook Live. We're uh, doing that at this point so we don't have to cool down the church. Uh, so as it cools off <coughs> September, uh, we'll come back <laughs> inside. Uh, but uh, in, into the sanctuary or something. But uh, anyway, it's Facebook Live this week. It's uh, volume three out of the book up here, session 10, uh, We Die With Christ. Uh, the last several weeks have been really good, so I really encourage you to, uh, to watch that, to, to pay attention to what's going on there. Uh, there are books available if you don't have one. Uh, the Lighthouse's third birthday party is July 10th uh, from three to six. Raise your hand, Tanya. Everybody look to the east. Okay, what's that for you on the east? And you look, yeah. All right, she's looking for helpers, uh, different things. Be sure and get with Tanya. Uh, uh, we're gonna, having an outreach there at the Lighthouse in Pomona. Uh, we've got bounce house, snow cone, popcorn, hot dogs. We've got lots of different things and uh, need lots of different help for different things. And so we encourage you to uh, really take part and be part of the festivities uh, for that day. Uh, so that's July 10th. This Thursday, uh, June 3rd, is that not right? Uh, this Thursday, uh, whatever Thursday date is, uh, from 1 to 4 is the food pantry at Pomona. Uh, we will have a delivery this week. It's not as big as last time, but there will be a delivery. Again, you all know the truck will be there at 9.30-ish. Uh, so uh, come and fellowship and help out with unloading. Uh, so that's Pomona. Okay, here's your things that you really need to write down if you haven't already wrote this down. Uh, North Baptist Food Pantry begins Tuesday, July 6th. Okay, it's going to be from 1 to 4. Uh, that food pantry is going to be for those on the north side of the river to the city limits from King Street to like 135. And so it's going to be a smaller session, but uh, we need volunteers. Uh, we have some. If you would like to help here, we don't want to pull everybody from Pomona to here. But if you want to help on that day, be sure and let me know. Uh, this Tuesday, we actually have a delivery for that. And we're not running the food pantry this week, but we have a delivery. And I can say already that I have no idea what time the truck is going to be here. Uh, she's supposed to let me know tomorrow, so I will let Emily know. We'll run it through the prayer chain. We'll have a delivery of supplies. We will set up. Uh, downstairs, put it in the places it kind of needs to go. Uh, if we could just get them help in loading it, a lot of you can probably just disperse at that point. We're going to set it up and be ready. The actual food pantry doesn't start until July 6th. Okay, we all understand that, right? Okay, delivery this week. Pantry starts July 6th. Okay. Uh, don't forget the blessing box as well. Uh, outside, it's been a great ministry here to the north side as well. Uh, one thing, if you are available tomorrow or, or Tuesday and would like to help during the day, uh, I, I cooled off the weather for you uh, just for this purpose. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a house in Pomona that we're going to do some outside work on, uh, trimming some trees up so they can mow under it, uh, pulling some honeysuckle vines, trimming a lot of bushes and stuff. It's directly north of... Buzzard Pizza. Everybody know where Buzzard Pizza is at, right? Uh, if you don't, stop by there today. Tell them we sent you. Uh, great, great place to eat. Anyway, it's directly across. And so, 1 o'clock tomorrow, uh, after the rain is done in the morning and it's cooled things off, uh, we're going to work for a while, and then we'll work on Tuesday. I can let you know through the prayer chain or something what time we're going to work. Uh, we're just going to clean up uh, one of the individual's yards that... Uh, is it physically able, is it physically active to be able to do that? And so we're going to uh, take part in sharing with that. And so they've got a, they're going to have a trailer there to unload the brush. So we, all we've got to do is get it into the trailer. They'll take care of it from there. And so we're just cleaning up. Uh, any questions, let me know. Uh, if you can help, that would be great. If you can't, just be in prayer for those that are, those that are there. And I believe that might be my announcements for today. Okay, we do have this morning... To your viewing enjoyment, uh, a VBS report, and a couple of songs. Uh, they're going to run the songs back to back once we once we get them going here. So who wants to come up here and? We need everybody up here. Okay, we need. Oh, that means everybody. Everybody that came to the 
Oh, you yeah. mean VBS, everybody. Well, everybody else can participate. And we expect you to. Okay. Once again, praise God, we actually got to have VBS this year. Last year we didn't get to, and it was a very sad day, sad year not having VBS, because I think VBS is what rejuvenates me to go for the next year. And it may be crazy, because it is a crazy week, right, Becky? Yeah. Extremely crazy getting it together, but the rewards are plentiful. And I can vouch for it myself, and I know each one up here that has ever participated in VBS can vouch for the rewards that we get are just above and beyond. Um, this week, or this the, this year's VBS was uh, Rocky Railway. Jesus Power pulls us through. On day one, Jesus Power helps us to do hard things. Trust Jesus. Day two, Jesus Power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Day three, Jesus Power helps us be bold. And day four, Jesus' power lets us live forever. And day five, Jesus' power helps us be good friends. And we learned all these things through different people in the Bible. We, uh, day one was Ananias. We experienced Ananias. Day two was Paul. Day three was Peter and John. Day four was Jesus' death and resurrection. Day five was the church is united and that was in acts that so we did that so we learned a lot and we had a great time and i think we had 30 ish kids 48 kids i didn't realize there was that many i know i did the third and fourth graders and i know i had like 12 kids so i was kind of oblivious to but i was so my heart was so touched by those kids they were so receptive and they participated. They weren't like they didn't want to be there. They had fun and they really talked and asked questions and there were some tears even, so I had an awesome time. So we would like to perform or offering offering was we ended up oh, yeah. four hundred and fifty two dollars for life care. Four hundred and fifty two dollars for life care. And there was a competition. Those of you that don't know, Rahema is a sister church to us, and in the past, we used to share VBS stuff. We would do it at their place, and then we'd come and do it here. Well, the year we did Serve Day, I can't even remember what year that was now, we thought we would really have an outpouring of kids, because we kind of had a lack of getting kids here. We had excellent support putting the VBS on, but the kids just didn't come, and we thought, well, when we canvass the whole north side, surely kids will come. We still didn't have a lot of kids other than the ones that we brought, you know, or came from other churches. So Rahema has been awesome at getting kids. They're out in the rural area, but their youth all graduated, and so they lost workers. So we decided to combine, and we've just been taking our workers and helping them put on an awesome VBS. We help decorate. We help perform. We help tear down. And we have a great time in fellowship with their body as well as us with them. And and we bring kids. We have brought some kids, too. I think we brought close to 10 kids this year, possibly from around here and from, from Pomona. So um, VBS is awesome. So let's join us with some songs if you'd like. If you feel the urge to stand up and participate, you're sure welcome. There'll be some motions on the screen that you can see. So, And don't judge us for not knowing it completely right, please. Yeah. 
get you fired up to want to help a VBS next year. I just don't know what to tell you because there this was just two of the really fabulous songs and the emotions that we get when we go with them are awesome. So if you didn't participate this year and you'd like to next year, get in touch with me or me. <laughs> yeah, we would love to pull you in to help out. Thank you. Now, we were missing Tree Santiago and in the bunches, but the wines have stepped in to kind of fill the bunch place this morning, so uh, I'm grateful to have them this morning. And also this morning, we're going to uh, honor our fathers. So we've got a basket somewhere. And we need two able-bodied, voluntold Wilcox girls to come up here. So anybody that's about Devin's age or above, you're going to give one of those two. We thought the fathers were either kind of sweet or nutty. I'm not sure which one. Uh, the good thing about this is that uh, if you sit towards the front, like I've always told you before, you know, the Holy Spirit moves more towards the front than he does to the back. We may run out of one kind or another by the time he gets back there. So you just get what's left over, right? All right. All right, you go ahead and start handing it out. I'm going to pray for him. Lord, this morning we do thank you for each one of the, the men within our congregation, the men within our families. And Lord, we come this morning just thinking about uh, um, the impact, the imprint, and the input that these men have 
plays not only on our lives, but on the lives of those around us. And and Lord, we're thankful for fathers. Uh, We're thankful for you as our Heavenly Father. And Lord, this morning we just give you praise and acknowledge you as uh, one who guides and directs for each one of us. Uh, Lord, this morning we just ask for your uh, blessings upon each one of these men as they leave this place. And Lord, help them to be who you've called them to be. Help them to be who you uh, intended them to be. And Lord, just uh, provide the... the encouragement and strength and the daily abilities to do what you have them to do. Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, uh, we're going to move on this morning, but I did want to tell you, um, yeah, we, we, we do have guests frequently in here, but uh, you, you have a new couple uh, this morning, and uh, uh, I, I got to introduce them once. You don't have to stand up. <clears throat> but I, I get to introduce them again this morning. Uh, the, the newly married is, is Josh and Julie Showalter. So, hey, we're super excited for you guys and in prayer for you and, and glad you're back. You probably had a good time. Uh, so uh, it's exciting. you uh, going to bring back some cool weather for us maybe uh, as it goes forward. So. All right, if you wanna, we're going to uh, move on into some prayer this morning. Uh, we have several prayer things that we've been uh, running through on the prayer chain. I ask you to continue to remember those. Uh, continue to remember our associational search team as they continue to guide and direct uh, for a new director of mission. Uh, Richard Taylor is uh, retiring in October, and so he'll still be around, but not as our associational guy. And so they're working on uh, filling that position uh, to really be in prayer for them that God would guide and direct. Uh, uh, Richard has been really good uh, for us as a body and uh, the way we uh, have been ministering to our uh, county and association. And so he's been a blessing to us. And we pray that uh, God brings us somebody just as, as powerful as that. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Stephen Shirley Taylor, uh, First Southern Baptist in Pratt. Uh, Shirley has ALS. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Charles Osborne is my nephew. He has cancer. He lives in Wichita. Uh, he's going through chemo. He's really had some struggles going on uh, with doing the chemo, but uh, uh, praying for that. Uh, pray for Cora, Cora for her health and her recovery. And Peggy with her uh, siblings with some health concerns. I uh, also pray for uh, Linda and an upcoming surgeon appointment. Not for six weeks, right? But we're. One of these days, yes, one of these days. Uh, so continue to pray for Linda um, and, and then pray for Owen uh, for his hearing. Uh, Jake is somewhere here this morning. Uh, yeah, I didn't think he was going to be, so we prayed for him last week. But uh, got another week or so, and then he's uh, headed out. So uh, he's our, our resident uh, Marine, for those of you that don't know. And so we're excited to uh, be in prayer for you and see what God, God holds. Uh, Continue to pray for Don and Pat. Uh, Pat told me yesterday that uh, they actually was able to see Asher for a little while at the house, and they were excited about that. And, and they watch you on Sunday morning. Maybe they don't watch you, but they watch the services and they're a part of it. So we do continue to pray for her and Don and, and for baby Asher that Asher will just continue to, to grow and be blessed. And pray for our shut ins, uh, Tony and Michelle, continue to lift them up. Uh, I saw Tony this week too. and. Uh, recently he had uh, kidney stones, uh, had, had, had a doctor's appointment, and uh, got a real good report from the doctor. Uh, so uh, they're hoping to be back uh, in church in a few weeks, so uh, continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, Scott and Tanya, uh, for health concerns and, and unspoken, and uh, just uh, uh, both moms are ill, and, and um, passing of an aunt, and and just some lots of things going on there. So uh, continue to lift them up. Uh, could you pray for uh, Belinda for her recovery? But we're also planning for Belinda for recovery for her for her ankle as well. She had surgery, so uh, that was uh, intended. Uh, and with that, this morning, uh, if you'll join me in prayer. You know, Lord, we are so blessed to be able to come to you as our Heavenly Father uh, with these concerns, with these issues, with these situations, and... Lord, we know as, uh, from the human standpoint that we cannot uh, fix a lot of these things. We can't uh, do much of anything other than we can, we can encourage and we can lift one another up. But Lord, we know that you are the God of the impossible. Uh, all things are possible through you. And so Lord, we, we've seen that in the lives of 
of people that we have prayed for, people within our own congregation. Uh, Lord, we have just seen you uh, continue to work. And so we just thank you for the blessings of, of what you have already done. And Lord, we come this morning not with a laundry list, but with a list of things that uh, we seek your guidance in. And Lord, I pray this morning that not only will we uh, see your evidence in each one of these lives, but it'll be apparent to uh, many others as well. Lord, I am thankful for Vacation Bible School and the impact and the imprint that does on those uh, children as they grow. And Lord, I know from the past, I've heard several times that people said uh, uh, they either received the Lord or really received great instructions through VBS and it really impacted their lives for years to come. And so we thank you for each one of those that helped, uh, that led, that taught, that encouraged, uh, that decorated, or, or wherever it was, Lord. And uh, we ask for your touch on that. Uh, Lord, again, we just lift these things up to you. Uh, I do think of the Munch family as they travel and are gone for uh, a period of time, Lord. We just ask that you would bless them uh, with encouragement, strength. Uh, we think about the food pantry, uh, the one in Pomona, and then the, uh, the endeavor here that we start to begin, Lord. We just ask for your hand upon that as well. Uh, be with the the workers, the, the people that come through for uh, food supplies, Lord, and in the midst of that, that you would uh, help them to see more than just physical food, Lord, but they would see spiritual food. And, and Lord, they would be, they'd see Jesus in, in those workers. Uh, we pray for protection for each one of them as well. So again, this morning, Lord, we just, we just thank you. We love you. Uh, we, we give these things to you, Lord, and ask that you respond accordingly the way uh, your will, your way, and your purpose is. So, Lord, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to stand again, we're going to sing, He Leadeth Me.
And this morning we're going to be in the book of Acts. If you have a Bible this morning, I'd encourage you to turn there. We're going to be in chapter 13. Uh, each, each week the messages come from our uh, daily Bible readings, from our Bible study. And so as we, as we go through and, and read those, that's where we uh, kind of keep and coming forward. And so uh, recently we've been moving through the book of Acts, so you're able to kind of uh, follow along each week. We've kind of progressed through the book of Acts to uh, chapter 13 this morning. And, and really this morning's message, uh, you know, we are on Father's Day, so uh, praise the Lord for that. But uh, the, the message this morning is the three C's, uh, which is committed, called, and commissioned. And in the midst of that, this morning's message, it really is for, for men, it's for fathers, uh, it's for uh, women, it's for children, it's for each and every one of us, actually. And so it's a, it's a really uh, unique time to uh, look into God's Word this morning, so uh, we invite you to do that. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, and uh, uh, whatever yours is, we ask that you would follow along. Uh, the words will be on the screen as well, but um, Acts chapter 13, uh, verses 2 and 3. And it says that one day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work for I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them away. This morning, would you join me in prayer? Lord, again this morning, I pray for each man within this room, within the uh, earshot of uh, the Facebook messages this morning. And Lord, whether they are uh, men with children or young men uh, thinking about someday having some or, or grandfathers, uh, wherever they are in the midst of that today, Lord, uh, we ask that you speak to them in a, in a mighty way. Uh, but Lord, as, as individuals, you have called us all to be followers of you. And Lord, this morning as we look at this message, I just pray that you would uh, speak to each one of us, uh, no matter our age, no matter our uh, spiritual ability, uh, no matter our even ability to comprehend, Lord, I pray that you would uh, uh, transcend that and go beyond, and Lord, and speak to each one of us. Lord, this morning as we look into your word, we are so thankful that uh, we have not only the living word of your son, Jesus Christ, but we have the written word that we can uh, continue to uh, seek guidance and direction from. And this morning, Lord, I just pray that you would use that word to uh, penetrate our hearts, uh, penetrate our minds, and Lord, that you would, you would transform us. It is, it is more than just hearing a message. It's more than just hearing your word. It's applying it to our lives. And so, Lord, I pray that that is a beginning process uh, for us today. So again, we just give you praise. We thank you as our Heavenly Father. Lord, we acknowledge you today. We give you all the praise and the glory and honor. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, we're still in uh, the book of Acts. We're moving forward. We still see this man called Saul, who actually in verse 13 is going to, uh, we're going to change his name to Paul, and he's going to be continued to be Paul from thereafter. But uh, uh, this this Acts chapter 13 is really the beginning of the Apostle Paul's first missionary journey. Uh, last week, we, we left Barnabas and Saul in, in Antioch. Uh, if you remember, if you were here, or if you remember the story, um, they had sent uh, Barnabas from Jerusalem to go check out what was happening in Antioch. And this, this Gentile pagan city was just... Uh, uh, developing and uh, in, in, engulfing in, in Christianity. The, the gospel was just spreading. And so when, when um, Barnabas got to Antioch, he was just amazed. He was joyful. He encouraged the believers there. And at that point, he just took off and headed to get Saul, who was up in, in Tarsus. And so he goes and gets Saul, and he says, you're not going to believe what's going on in the Antioch. It's it's crazy. There's people coming to the Lord everywhere, and then they need uh, good, solid men to be in there. And so he, he brings Saul back to Antioch, and it says the, the scripture said there that they stayed there for a year, and they had discipled the church. 
Now, our Bible study for this last three quarters and, and really going into the next quarter is about discipleship. It's about learning how to be discipled. It's about learning how to then disciple someone else. It's about growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ and just really what that means. And, and no matter where you are on your journey, whether you are a uh, mature uh, spiritual Christian or just a new one in Christ, it all works well together as we come together and that as we see uh, that they did in Antioch. They come together to, to minister to the congregation, to, to build it up, to edify it, to strengthen it. And so Barnabas and Saul, they, they ministered to the congregation. The congregation then ministered to one another. Some translations say they even ministered to the Lord. And that means really to, to draw near to God, to, to really worship, uh, to be a part of, of what God is doing. And, and not only did we see that it brings joy to Barnabas at that point, but as we worship the Lord, as we draw near to him, it really brings joy to him as well. He has a desire for each one of us to, to grow in our relationship with him, uh, to be uh, able to be a willing vessel to do what he, what he really has called us to do. And so it, it brings joy, it brings pleasure to him when he sees what we do. And so in essence, that's really the, the reason God created man in the first place was to worship him. And so the first job, I, I don't I always take calling it a job, it's, really, it's a duty, it's a, really it's a responsibility of a believer is to minister to the Lord. Is to worship the Lord, is to, is to offer our bodies as a, as a living sacrifice. And we have to remember then that, that ministering to the Lord really, uh, and even as we worship, it means that we are drawing ourselves into a closer relationship with the Lord. We're doing in our lives what, what pleases the Lord, and so that brings honor to Him. And so we worship, we, we, we praise Him, we, we read in His Word, we are in prayer, we are encouraging one another, we're a, a part of the body, and one of the things that we've noticed over the last several weeks is that not that we're always doing, 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 but that we're also listening as well. And so we saw last week that, uh, that the Holy Spirit had spoke to uh, those and they heard. And so this morning, again, we see the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul. And so we know that the Holy Spirit, that's the third part of the Trinity of God. And so God is speaking, God is working. And so even today, it's important to understand that God still works and moves and speaks to us today. And today he speaks to us through his word or through circumstances, through situations. Uh, through the church, through, through prayer. So it's not always about doing. Sometimes we need to stop and, and listen. And so it also says in the scripture that they fasted. And so as a part of their service to the Lord, they fasted. And so they, they sensed a need to draw close to God. And they felt that as they, and they believed that as they fasted then... That would do just that. Now, now fasting is not just um, going on a diet, right? It's not just uh, eliminating a food source from our, from our diet and, and moving on. Uh, fasting is really a part about uh, as we stop one thing, uh, eliminate a source, that we go into another source. And so uh, instead of having your M&Ms, you can give them to me. And instead of eating your M&Ms, then you can spend some time praying to the Lord for me because you gave me all your M&Ms. Amen? And so that, that you know, so we, so as, as we fast, uh, and so for them it was just a normal way of life. And so as they, as they fasted, they, they sought the Lord. They, they used that time to direct themselves to the presence of God. And so they were seeking guidance. They were seeking direction. And they believed that as they fasted, it would help them focus on the Lord. And I wonder, do you, do you think that, that they really, as they, as they fasted, as they 
We're asking God for direction on how to spread the gospel. <coughs> Do you think that they thought God would answer? And of course, the answer is, is yeah. I mean, they really thought that. They'd seen God work, they'd seen God move, and it was already in the presence of these things taking place. And so, so they were committed, which is our first C this morning. They were already committed. The, as, as we read the scripture this morning, we're, we're assuming that they fasted and, and that they prayed often. They opened the scriptures and they shared to one another. They, they encouraged one another and they did this often. And so the things that they did was motivation to continue to do just what they were doing. If they fasted, if they prayed, if they asked God for direction on how to, to share Jesus with the world, <clears throat> then it comes to the point in our lives, shouldn't we probably do the same? And sometimes we get so busy, caught up in, in doing our lives or doing things that we forget really what we're here for, what we're called here to do. And that's to share Jesus. And we've seen over these last several weeks in, in the book of Acts, we see that God moves by sending people who have their hearts focused on him to reach people in other places that he's already working on as well. And so he's connecting the pieces. Did you ever do those um, dot to dot things? And you couldn't quite tell what it was and you started at one and you went around and oh my, that's a star, that's a dog. or that's a... And so God is really, he already knows what it is and he's connecting the pieces by, by building up people and strengthening them and then urging them, directing them to go connect with these ones that he's trying to bring into repentance, bring into a, a new relationship with him, and he, he places them together. You know, we've seen that through Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip was in Samaria, right? He had a great ministry in Samaria, and all of a sudden the Spirit said, Go to the desert road. You know, he's going to go to the desert. He's leaving a great ministry in Samaria and he's going to go to the desert. And he didn't know why, but he just goes because that's what God said. And he goes and as he's traveling along, the eunuch's going down there in the chariot and he said, get up beside him. So Philip goes over, gets up beside him and he hears him reading out of the book of Isaiah. Well, Philip already knows what to do. He says, hey, you know what you're, you know what you're reading there? The guy said, no, not really, I don't understand it. I, I read it, but I, you know, and he said, well, let me explain it to you. And so he explained that who he was reading about there and the good news was about Jesus Christ and he was the Messiah and, and he has come now. He, you know, Munich was so excited that uh, he accepted the Lord right there that day and, and he said, if there's water, let me be baptized. And lo and behold, there was. And so Philip baptizes him and that was part of that journey. And the next thing you know, you see Philip in Caesarea, and that's about all you hear from him. But you know, because of the ministry in the past, that Philip is continuing to do just what he was doing. That gets us to last week, to Barnabas. From Jerusalem to Antioch. From Antioch to Tarsus. To get Saul, and then back to Antioch. And then after the day, they're going to go out on the worldwide mission field. And so the problem today in our world is that many people want to just be a, a backseat driver in, in God's work. You, you know what that is? Uh, when, uh, when we were early married, um, we would get, no, not my wife. Uh, I am not going there. Uh, but we would go to her grandparents every Memorial Day weekend. Remember that? Oh, it was. It was the, the highlight of my life, I think, to go. And, and they had this big caprice, and we had the, uh, the little kids coming on, which was Jordan, Kai, and Katie back then. And so we would be in the car, and Grandma would sit right behind Wallace. Wallace was Grandpa, and he would be driving this big old caprice, and I'd be in the front seat, and she'd be in the back. And 
they'd take us to the different cemeteries, right? And they'd say, well, this, and we'd get out and look, and this is so-and-so, and I wish that I wrote all that down because I don't know where all that stuff is now. But anyway, the, the best part was that, was the drive, right? So I'm like sitting up there, you know, trying to talk to Wallace, and, and she's like, how fast are you going? You know, you know this is a 30, right? Do, do you see that truck? Come, he's coming over to the end. And I'm sitting there like, oh my, and he never says a thing. He just sits there, you know. Yeah, there's a stop sign up ahead. Like, you don't think he knows that? I don't know. And so she, and I don't think she ever drove. She didn't have a driver's license. Seriously. And so she never drove a day in her life except from the back seat. And so I often wondered, you know, when we were not there and she was in the front seat, what was that like? Oh, my. He, he didn't wear hearing aids, but I bet he wished he could. But he just sat there and he was always so quiet and he never said anything. I loved him. It was just great. But, but that's, sometimes we do just that in God's work. He's saying, do this or go here. And we're saying, but do you see the stop sign? Do you see the situation I'm living in? Do you understand my circumstance? Lord, if you just did, I know you wouldn't send me there. And he's like, if you knew me, you'd know that's why I'm sending you there. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So, so that's what, you know, so what the problem today really is backseat driving. That's not God's way of, of working. You don't really, you don't get to tell God what to do, where you want to go, or when you want to go. There's either a, an obedience thing to say, okay, or, we, or we're disobedient and, and don't. Now, we all have children, or most of us do, right? And so when you say, take out the trash, and they take out the trash, that's obedience, right? Right? When you take out, take out the trash and you don't see them for two or three days, that could be disobedience, right? When you say, there, but then there's this medium step and you can say, take out the trash and we can take it out of the trash can, take it close to the back door and then go back on and do your own stuff. Does that ever happen to you? You can hear my girls laughing because you know it happens where I live. Right? So it, it, almost, it almost gets there. The problem is, yes, when it doesn't get there, it usually creates more problems. We have dogs. That's why I say that. And so they all, they're all really... See, you have a red M&M... That's what their faces look like right now. <laughs> but I love them dearly, right? So they, they tolerate me. So there's, there's obedience when we, when we go. There's disobedience when we don't. And that stuff that's kind of in the middle, uh, we're not sure what that is, that with the Lord is, is still disobedience. And so many times that's what we, we do in our lives. It's not that when he says go or, or, or do or say, it's not that we say, no, Lord, I'm not going to do that. We just almost complete the task. We, we don't quite. And in essence, that, again, just falls under the, the line of, of disobedience. And so when God says to go, he really has a, a purpose and a plan in mind and and, you know, and I, as I spoke last week, I said a lot of times we think when the Lord says go, he's sending us to a far off land. A lot of times he's sending you to your neighbor or to your family or to the person down the street or to the, a co-worker or to a schoolmate. So not always do when he says go, are we going to some elaborate faraway place? It could be. And that has happened. And, and we know people that have done that. But sometimes it's just going right here. And so we, we can't hardly handle the task of going right here. So how could we ever go to Antioch or uh, any place like that? And so the scripture this morning says that as they worshiped and, and ministered, they, they fasted to the Lord, God 
spoke to him. And so we want to see that again. So the Holy Spirit said, he said, I want them for a specific work, for a specific purpose. And to a point or to, to separate them means that he has a specific purpose in mind. Not just one for everybody, but specifically for whoever that is that he's, that he's talking about here. Here's Barnabas and Saul. And so it's to separate them from other things. Now that's got to be key that we understand that. So I want you to hear that I said to be separate to God means that we're separate from other things. And that's where our society today really, really struggles. We want to be separate to God, but we want to keep our foot in the world. We want to keep doing what we're doing, but we just want to be a part of who God wants us to be. And he says, as believers, as followers, I want you to be separate from the world. I don't want you to be of the world, but you can be in the world. And there's a big difference there. And the things that they were doing is what was, was drawing them nearer to God. They were seeking his guidance. They were seeking his direction. They were seeking his purpose. They were intentionally looking for God to move. Intentionally. They, they wanted him to move. They wanted him to speak. And he did. And so they, they followed his direction. And so we see then that says the Holy Spirit said... Set apart for me, appoint Barnabas and Saul for a special work, which I have called them. We cannot say yes to God and still say yes to everything else as well. See, there's got to be a, we've got to understand that. Uh, we, we expect things a lot of times from our children that we don't do ourselves when it relates back to, to God. And we see here this morning that <clears throat> Barnabas and Saul, the two that were called were the two that were most available, the most gifted people at that time in that congregation for this specific purpose that they had called them to. And so God had a specific work for, for Barnabas and Saul to do. And that's why he, God, appointed them to do what needed to be done. And so they were, they were chosen. And the calling that God had on these two, he'd already been working in their lives. I, I really wanted, I, I forgot, uh, I got too many things going this week. I really wanted a, a rotary phone for you this morning. But I, I do have a push button one that is not going to work because it's not connected to the wall, right? And so you all know what a calling is when the phone rings. Hello? It's for you. And so a calling. What, what is my calling? I, I hear that a lot from lots of people. What, what is God calling me to do? And so the calling that God had on these two, he'd already been working in their lives. And so that's the importance of like journaling and writing down some things to see what God has done. And I know uh, several of you don't like to write in your Bibles, but man, I, I do. Uh, call me a sinner, if you will. I, I write all over it. I date it. Uh, my Bible is my journal. I said I want to have one Bible for every one of my kids when I... When I pass away, that somehow through that scripture, that if they don't know Jesus, they can find Jesus. And if they need to help somebody else find Jesus, they can find Jesus through that. Uh, that that's my goal and my desire. And I've not got them all marked up yet, so they, I can't go anywhere yet. Uh, so they all can't have one. Uh, I keep telling the Lord that, but, you know, his calling may be different than mine too. But um, this is not something new to Barnabas and Saul. It really is who they are. It's really what they've done. And as we look to this point up until their ministry, once they accepted the Lord, like in, in Saul's case, I mean, if I call him Paul, sorry, I'm used to that, but 
uh, in Saul's case, uh, when, he, when he accepted the Lord on the road to Damascus, it, you know, it changed him. And, and so from that point forward, he's just uh, sold out for the Lord. And so for Barnabas and Saul, it was just something else that they were already doing. God's calling is usually just in a different place. But he wants you to do the same thing that you're doing before. And so have you ever wondered in your life, you know, as you, you look around, you've had to grow up in the church or whatever, and you see God has called people, and you think, man, why did God call them to that? Why didn't he call me? Why did he call him? Why did he call her? And so you can almost see some of the people in the church in Antioch looking around, and they, they see Barnabas and Saul, and they say, why did they call him? Well, why can't he call me to go on this fabulous missionary journey and get chained and beaten and shipwrecked and all that good stuff? Right? <clears throat> but we do do that. We, we wonder. And I, I, we spoke a little bit last week about God wants us to be doing what we're already supposed to be doing. And if we don't seem to feel God's presence or God's connection or God's leading, then the purpose would be uh, we need to get into a closer relationship with him through his word, through prayer, through uh, uh, whether it's fasting or just guidance and direction, uh, trying to get into a closer relationship with him. And so God is going to use you to do what he's already created in you to do. God's going to use you to do what he's already created in you to do. And for Barnabas and Saul, this was going to be reach more people for Christ. That's what they were already doing. That's what we're called to do as followers. And so when, when God calls, when God does things, when he calls, he, he does it right then. Uh, some versions this morning say now. Maybe your version says that. This is a point. It means right then. Don't have a business meeting to think about what might take place. Should we really send Barnabas and Saul? Are they really the ones? Well, God said, and he said, appoint them and send them. Separate them, set them apart. And so God has a timetable, and when God's timetable speaks, it means, it means now. It's not later. It's not when you get around to it. It's not almost taking the trash out, right? It's, it's doing what God calls at that point. And so the work that God has called them to, Barnabas and Saul, required total dependence on God. And so the lives of those chosen by God require a dependence on God. And that's another issue that we face in society today because we really like to be in total Control. I want to be in control of this situation. And if I'm not in control of the situation, then the situation must be out of control. Yeah. But with God, it's not out of control. If it's out of control, we might be the one that's out of control. And so we need to step back and see what God is trying to do or say in the midst of that situation. And so for Barnabas and Saul, it's just a continual process. It's just what they already have done. The only difference now to be in a new location, it'll be in a location of God's choosing. Then the scripture says they laid hands on them. This was that formal commissioning. So now they were, they were committed, they were called, they were chosen, they were commissioned. And it was the work that was already done. It was what they were doing. The, the, the church in Barnabas then, the uh, church in Antioch sent Barnabas and Saul out. When we, I, the first church I ministered to in southeast Kansas, uh, I, I'd been there for a while and, and uh, felt called uh, to go to Michigan. We, we went to Michigan and so I, I, I turned in a resignation. We were, we were leaving and they said, well, you are not, you're not leaving. We're not, we're not going to accept your letter of resignation. 
Uh, I was young. <laughs> I was like, uh, what does that mean? I mean, does that mean I can't go? I don't know. And they said, no, we're not, we're not going to accept your letter of resignation. We're not going to let you go. We're going to send you out as a missionary to the world. And so wherever you go, you're going to go as a part of us, and we're going to pray for you. I was like, wow, that's really, that's really cool. That's way different than, than what normally takes place. And so they didn't, they laid hands on us, they prayed for us, and they, and they sent us out. And we still are in connection with, with a lot of them there. And uh, several have went on to be with the Lord. There were some great, great people there. Uh, several have went on to be with the Lord. But there's still a, a good, strong group down there. I uh, really uh, love to see what, what's going on. And, and God is still working in the midst of them with, with a, new, a new pastor down there. Uh, been a couple since we've been gone. But. So they laid hands on them. Um, the thing about this is that as you see Barnabas and Saul and they heard the word of the Lord that said a point for them, uh, the, the church saw that too. And so the church knew that Barnabas and Saul was to go. And so they were laying hands on them to, to do that. Uh, they knew what God had called uh, them to do. It was a very important task. He was working in the process of it. So the church in Antioch, they, they commissioned these, these really, at this point, first two missionaries that we see uh, to go, uh, Barnabas and Saul. And so what I want you to see this morning is that, yes, the, the church in Antioch sent Barnabas and Saul out as missionaries. But in reality, all the church in Antioch was doing was affirming the call on Barnabas and Saul's life that was already going on. It was already something that they were doing. If the Holy Spirit doesn't send, there's no need to go. You understand that? We can drum up a lot of things to do. We can say, hey, let's go do this. Let's go here. Let's go do that. But if the Holy Spirit is not sent, then there is no need to go. Because that is not the direction that he wants you to be in. And so that is, that is key. But when he does, again, it's like, look out, right? Because the Holy Spirit's already there and he's connecting those pieces. He's connecting those dots together. And so the three C's then, we're going to go through these real quick. Uh, the three C's is, what does it mean to be committed? Now today in our world, in our society, you can be committed to a lot of things. Unfortunately, too many things. But unless you are totally connected and committed to God, the rest of those things mean nothing. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't be committed to some other things. But you've got to be committed to God first and foremost. And Jesus even tells us that in every aspect of our life, in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, he says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. The scripture goes on, right, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But what I want you to see there is he's saying that you and me, Pastor Kim, I, I have to too, I have to love the Lord with every ounce of my being. Every bit of it. And if I do, then there's blessings that come with that. That means holding nothing back. You're commitment to God must be greater than any other commitment that you have. Work, spouse, family, church, neighbors, community, uh, no matter what it is, your commitment to God has got to be first and foremost. And if you do that, the rest of those relationships come together. And so that means this morning, some of us have some stuff to let go of. And you're like, Pastor, not those M&Ms. Dude, you just handed them out. Now, there are, there are some stuff in our lives that we, that we need to get rid of. Because it has priority 
over God in our lives. And, and we would never say that out loud. You know, I would never say, boy, this is a bigger priority than God ever because I love that thing more than anything else in the world. We would never say that. But our lives prove that that's true. And so we really need to seek this morning, what are those things that are in our way for a total relationship with God? And then the second of the C3s is, what does it mean to be called, right? If I could do it, I would call Eleanor one of your cell phones right now. So we just had this house lit up and ringing, right? We'd hear all your ringtones. We'd hear, you know, uh, yours is funny, uh, so I can't even do it right now. But uh, So you'd hear all these ringtones going off. And so what does it mean to really be called? And uh, unfortunately, uh, several of us know what it was like when there was no caller ID. And so when the phone rang, well, I remember a time when there was no uh, solicitors really called. Can you, your warranty never ran out on your vehicle because you didn't have one, right? And we were talking the other day at the Lighthouse uh, you know, party line, too. Remember party lines? I mean, you get on the phone, somebody be talking, you're like, get off the phone so I can call my grandma. Yeah. You know, come on. How long can that woman talk? Forever. I had a neighbor that was on our line and she could talk forever. I was like, I would like to call my grandma sometime. Come on. It, it, we don't have that now. And so now when we have the call, we look, and this one will even do that, we look to see who's calling. Well, I can decline that one, right? I can silence that one. I can, uh, ooh, ooh, what do they want? I don't want to talk to them. Yeah, the pastor's calling. Don't answer that. And so what does, that, what does it mean to be, to be called? And so the Bible itself gives multiple mentions of, of different people being called for specific purposes. But the calling is only a call if you surrender to it. It's just like the phone. If the phone, the phone could stay here and ring and ring and ring, and if I didn't answer it, it would just go to the answer machine in there. Of course, this one ain't going anywhere, right? Because it's not connected. But it would just go to the answer machine. You could check it later. Until we surrender and answer that call, yes, Lord. Yeah. You want me to do what? Yeah. And that's, that's the Lord. Until we surrender to that call, it, it's, it's still just a call. And yes, we were called to salvation, and that's the first and foremost, but, but it's only the beginning for every Christian. There's a calling on their life that's specific to them. And so God has created you in your mother's womb. And he created you specifically and intricately for a purpose and a plan. And not only for a purpose and a plan, but even for a time. And this is the time that you're here. You could have been in, born in any time era ever. And he chose you for this one. That's awesome in itself when you think about it. We always say, I'd like to have been born back in them country and western days, right? No. <laughs> you got Jake out. Dude, let me have a horse and let's go. No, it's, we have today. And we were called today. And we're called to salvation. But unless we never accept the call, then it means we're not fully committed to him and surrender our, our life to his call. And we only really discover our call when we're walking close to him. And really, this is the thing in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The scripture for our calling is this. <clears throat> and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let there be a living and holy sacrifice, your body. The kind that he will find acceptable? This is truly the way to worship him. And this is, there's two verses, but this is like super key here. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. The church and the followers and the believers of Jesus Christ should not look like America 2021. You are called to something different. Something far greater than even that. 
And if you do, he said, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Then you will know. So the closer you are in a relationship with God, being committed to him, the easier it is to hear his voice. When he calls you to do something, there's a call to surrender. That's one of the things about God's word today. It's, uh, it's not just about reading the Bible. It's not just about hearing a sermon. It's not even about memorizing scripture. If you never apply those truths to your life, it's only knowledge. And knowledge cannot transform your life. Only God can. So it needs to be As you read, it's because you want an understanding of who God is. And so as you read that scripture, and we see that, and we hear God's going to speak, that I'm going to listen, that I'm going to surrender to his call. And unless we surrender, we're not submitting to his leadership. As you hear God's call in your life, it'll be confirmed. As you go to do things or say something, people are going to say, yeah, I I saw that in you. I I knew God was going to use that. Jake Skidell, I knew God was going to do that in you. I saw that as you grew up in this church. And so what does it mean to be commissioned? The, 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 The final C. Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20. Therefore... Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always to the, even to the end of age. Now this is the great commission, right, that Jesus issued. And the, the thing about this is that we get so caught up in so many things in the midst of that, that the only real command in there is go and make disciples and teach. Baptizing is, is just part of what discipleship is about. But you got to go and make. And then teaching those new disciples. It's the going and the making the disciples that's key to that verse. That's what Jesus wants his followers to do. If you ever wondered, here, this, this, is, your, this is your key today. If you ever wondered, what does God want me to do? He wants you to go and make disciples. Simple. Disciples of Jesus. Not disciples of ourselves or not disciples of the church or not disciples of the world. But he wants us to go and make disciples of Jesus. And then teach them what the Bible says. The other things are instructions on how to do it. And so Jesus expects every one of his followers to go and make disciples. In his absence. Right before he left, he says this. He said, now remember, I'll be with you to the end of the age, but but go and make disciples. That's why he left us until he returns. We've got a job to do. Every person could come to the Lord the way Saul did on the road to Damascus. By a blinding light, if God wanted that to happen. But he doesn't. He wants to use you and you and you and you and you and you and me. And so he called us to make disciples. And a Christian disciple is a baptized follower of Christ who believes in Jesus' teaching, imitates Jesus' example, clings to his sacrifice, believes in his resurrection, possesses the Holy Spirit, and lives to do his work. This is just like Bible school. Yeah, it's really amen, that's it. 
That's a tall order, but that's what we're to do. There's roadblocks in the way. There's potholes. There's road construction along our journey. And that's why encouragement for one another is so important. See, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in, in Jerusalem. And that means right here. Right in our neighborhood, right in our community, right in Ottawa, right in, right in this area. And in Judea, that, that's kind of Franklin County. That's expanding our borders. Then in Samaria, we're supposed to do it in the state. And into the ends of the earth. And each one of us is called to that. And so rather than weighing us down like a burden, we should find joy in it, fulfilling our mission with love to Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. What, what did Jesus hold back from you? Nothing. He gave everything. And so as we get back to where we started this morning, Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. One day as they were worshiping, Sunday, June 20th, 2021. We were worshiping the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit said, appoint for me for a special work which I've called them. After more fasting and prayer, the men laid hands on them and led them and sent them on their way. When you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing, others will see it in your life. You won't have to tell them. You don't have to say, look at what I'm doing. They, they already see it. And they will confirm it and be excited for you. So we're committed, we're called, and we're commissioned. And so that's a message for every man, but it's also a message for every woman and child as well. It's interesting to me how through these scriptures, how they've worked out. And we were originally going to start this Bible study in about April of 2020. And you all know what happened in April of 2020. Nothing. What still happened? Lots of things were happening. It just wasn't happening the way we normally expected it to happen. And so we didn't start this Bible study until uh, later on. It was, I mean, about to look back, uh, September, August, we went ahead and started it and started moving forward. It was different. Uh, but we've come through it and been excited about it and going doing it. And, and here we are today with this message. And so many times throughout these weeks, it's been apropos for the exact thing. And I thought this morning, here we are, one day as we were worshiping and fasting, June 20th, 2021, the Lord says, the point for me, Pat and Melissa Hill. And I'm going to send them to another place. And we're like, dude, let's have a business meeting because we're not, we're not accepting this. <laughs> right? We don't want them to go. But God has work for them. And it's interesting, we, uh, we've talked to different people at, at Pomona and, and then over here uh, Friday night and... And people said, you guys came in and you stepped right in. We're pillars. And God's now saw what they're doing and needs them in another place. Sad, but encouraging. And so you never know how long somebody is in your midst. And so... I encourage you to take advantage of all of that that you can. I'm excited for them to see what they're going to do, where they're going to go, what God's going to do, because they're already doing, they just were doing what God called them to do, and now he's called them to do it somewhere else. So if the doing didn't change, they're just going to be them somewhere else. A little bit longer distance, not as far I heard Pat was still coming back for the Bible bullets and barbecue, which I'm excited about. Which is in the fall, guys. If you haven't been, you, you're missing out. Uh, and, and different things they were saying they were going to still uh, come back for. But uh, we said Pat had to be back every two weeks on Thursday. Uh, 
for, for delivery at Pomona. <laughs> but it's really unique how God places these things together. Man, you cannot sit here and say, I just don't see God working. If you do, you're seriously blind. How God could orchestrate that message today to be the same time that they were on their departure out. And they were ones that are really doing what they're doing and now they're going to be doing it somewhere else. God didn't call them to Africa. He called them to Arkansas. For some, that may seem like Africa. <laughs> but it's not. You know, and so it's a really unique. And so I encourage you this morning, really, as an individual this morning, to commit your life to Christ. If there are things that are stopping that relationship with the Lord, is you need to reevaluate. And, and so you can hear the calling. And once the calling takes place, then the commissioning is because others have already seen that in you. And so with that this morning, let's pray. Lord, I am so excited this morning just to uh, be encouraged again by your word. It's just amazing how you place these things together and you, you orchestrate times and, and people to, to do just what you've called them to do. And, and so, Lord, I pray that... Uh, as Pat and Melissa goes to a new destination, Lord, you continue to bless them, that you encourage them, and, and Riley as well, Lord, that you would just uh, set a fire in her that would be one that would uh, call others to uh, accountability of Christ. And Lord, I pray for the body here that, that as they depart, that you would continue to uh, feed into this body more Barnabases and Saul's people that are already doing what they're doing that now you've called to be doing it with us. As Lord, we know uh, who you are. We know the way you provide. We know your actions. And we know how exciting it is in your word to just see those things come together. Uh, Lord, we, just, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for uh, your presence with us. Uh, Lord, we pray this morning for each one, whether they're in this room this morning or they're hearing it on Facebook. Or Lord, even those that might hear it in the weeks to come. Uh, on Facebook, that the Lord, they would take this message to heart. That they would not only hear the word, but Lord, that they would apply it to their lives. And that's when we start to understand and make a difference. And Lord, I pray that we would be able to surrender to your call. Lord, speak to us in just a way that we need to hear and in the way we can understand. And Lord, we come to you this morning, just giving this all to you. Thanking you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you stand this morning, we're going to sing in the garden. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses. And so individually, we do have to come uh, on our own. And so if God has called you this morning to something and you want to share, uh, that's great. But I really encourage you not to leave this morning without uh, rectifying that thought of are there things in our lives that are in the way of that relationship. And so I come to the garden alone. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on Yeah. 
is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy First Father's Day in heaven. Man, that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, look down and say, yeah. That's what it's Amen. about. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, we are. Yes. What are you pointing at me? If there's people that have not oh, if there's people that have not signed a puzzle piece with your name, we encourage you to do so. This puzzle is going with Pat and Melissa to Arkansas. And, and you are a piece of the, of the puzzle. And so if you haven't signed that, I encourage you to see Shelly right afterwards and, and get that done and get it signed and, and so we can get it to him. And, um, I do know, as far as I know from what Pat said, next Monday is loading the U-Haul day at the Hills. And so, uh, like I said, tomorrow if you're available in the afternoon, you want to help do some, some tree trimming and stuff, you can get with me. Next Monday, they need some help loading the trailer. And so if you've got time off or retired or, or whatever, we don't know exact time yet. Uh, we'll know by, but, and that's for Hills, not tomorrow, it's next week. Their, their stay got extended, praise God, uh, for, for a week. Uh, but they're going to need some help next week on Monday. Um, so with that this morning, hey, we're excited to uh, have each one of you this morning. I know we got the visitors. We're, we're grateful to have you here this morning. I know we have several even new ones that are watching on Facebook this morning. We're excited to have you. Uh, if you all need anything, be sure and contact us through the week. Let us know. We'd be glad to help, guide, direct, uh, whatever that is. And uh, in the midst of that, uh, we're going to close off here. We'll be back on Facebook Live for Wednesday night, Bible study at 7. Uh, if you'd like books, uh, you're more than welcome to take some. We've got all the ones through from the past, but uh, uh, we're going to be getting a new um, session here before too long. They all go together, but they all fit perfectly uh, individually as well, so you're, you have part of that. So happy Father's Day. Uh, may your day be blessed, and may you be encouraged as you leave, but really, uh, really start to apply the truths that you hear from, from God. So I'm going to close in prayer, and then you can be dismissed. Lord, again this morning, I am so thankful to uh, be in your presence, Lord. And I pray this morning that the message that I had was what you wanted conveyed. And uh, I'm always encouraged that knowing that 
you can take my feeble words, Lord, and, and use them mightily because you can change them to the ears that they hear. And so I pray that today. And Lord, I pray for each one that you can strengthen and encourage them, Lord, that they will, they will commit their lives to you, uh, that they will, they will hear your call upon their life. And Lord, that, that at, at, the, at the church and the body will be able to see that and, and encourage them as they, as they move forward. Uh, Lord, it doesn't always mean going somewhere else. It can just mean right here uh, where you've called them to be. As the Lord, again, I'm so thankful for each one that's here. I'm thankful for those that have watched on Facebook. And Lord, I pray that this message is one that can be used in a, in a mighty way in lives, um, yeah, wherever that might uh, transcend through the, through the waves. And so we just thank you again for your presence, uh, guidance, and direction. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed. Thank you.